Hi, my name is Lori DeRogers. I'm a, uh, I write poetry. I uh, have uh, two books out that are from Salmon Poetry in Ireland. Uh, the first one is called The Philosopher's Daughter, and it was out in uh, 2013. And uh, the second one is called Sometimes I Hear the Clock Speak, and it just came out in April 2016. Um, I'm going to read some work from both books, and um, in, if you would like to, I'll say it before and at the end, if you'd like to purchase uh, my books, um, you can go to salmonpoetry.com, that's S-A-L-M-O-N, like the fish, poetry.com. Um, they're actually uh, produced and uh, published in Ireland, but uh, you can pay in dollars, no problem. <laughs> and the... Uh, the uh, the publisher Salmon Poetry ha is a poetry only publisher. They're, they've been around for 35 years, and um, uh, it's a very nice publisher, and it's distributed in the U.S. as well. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and start. Um, Larry did ask me to let you know that I uh, I started writing seriously only about 10 years ago. I went back to school for my MFA at age 50. And I'm 61 now, and I'm very happy I did. I've made some wonderful friends and been able to have opportunities uh, such as speaking with you today. Um, so I'm going to start out with some poems. Uh, all of the poems that I've written in uh, this book, in the new book, are um, inspired by music and time. Uh, they're also inspired by memory because all of those uh, themes go together, uh, and uh, there are a couple of poems in, in my first book that also are about music, are inspired by music, um, so uh, some of it's also about art. Uh, so I'm just going to start with uh, one poem from this book. This is The Philosopher's Daughter. And this poem is basically my first marriage in a nutshell. Um, it's called That Pomegranate Shine, and it starts with an epigraph. Two brides arise from the river, shivering and shining like pomegranate seeds. Those are words from an Armenian song. I was the wrong kind of bride, more sweat than glisten, more peach than pomegranate. At 23, in love with marriage, not the man, I plunged into rough water, bringing grandmother's candlesticks, mother's books, and two silver trays. Ten years later, I emerged, shivering, dragging my ragged volumes, one candlestick, and two babies. On the bank, I shook off the water and breathed. Standing with my children, looking out over the river, the new brides asked me where I got that pomegranate shine. This is one more piece. This is a, a poem um, that's influenced by uh, French art songs that I used to sing. I was a musician before I was uh, got involved in poetry. I used to sing uh, classical, and I also uh, used to play guitar and write songs. Uh, it's called Les Cigales, or the Cicadas, and the words in here are in French. Um, les Cigales, les Cigalons chantent mieux que les violons, which is the epigraph at the beginning. Um, it says, the uh, cicadas sing better than violins, and it's from Gérard, who uh, uh, was the artist, uh, the writer of the song. After 16 years underground, the bugs emerge, their butter brown wings sticky, climb the nearest tree to dry and harden. They lay their eggs in wet green oak leaves, then sing for days and days until the singing lifts them up to swarm and die, crashing blindly into fences, trees, and homes. Before their larvae creep down trunks of trees to find a place below the ground 
and wait another 16 years. At 16, a girl is emerging from years beneath her mother's skirts, her butter brown eyes dewy, her gaze not yet hardened. She lies down beneath the oak, weeps and weeps until the rain begins to fall, then runs inside the house, her room door crashing shut. She crawls beneath the bed, a place to wait until a first lost love disperses among the evening song of the cicadas. So the other poems I'm reading are from the new book, which is there. I don't know if you how well you can see it, but it has a picture on it of a violinist and a clock. So that works very well, and I love blue. This is a clock that's actually, I believe it's from Prague, which is kind of cool, because Eastern Europe, uh, my family was from uh, uh, Ukraine area in Russia, and uh, they were Jewish, and my grandmother came here in 1912. Um, and I just love this uh, cover very much. It's, it's cool, and blue is my favorite color, so it worked out rather well. So the first poem in here, I also used to play violin, which is why that's meaningful, I guess. <laughs> this is called The Balanced Stone, and it's um, inspired by a sculpture by Isamu Noguchi, also called The Balanced Stone. And there's a little story which I'd like to tell you. Uh, when I saw the sculpture for the first time, I read the plaque next to it, and it said that there used to be another stone. Uh, on top, there's a roof on the top of these, uh, like kind of legs. It's almost like a table thing, but it's a roof instead of a tabletop. And on top is this stone that is quartz. And then on it, there's nothing on top of it, but it says that the artist removed a second stone from the sculpture. And I thought that was really cool and interesting that there was something that used to be there but wasn't. And so. That was very inspiring to me. In fact, I'm currently writing a whole collection of poems about things that aren't there. So um, this poem, which is the first one in this book, inspired a whole other collection of poetry, which will probably not be out for three more years. So please buy this one. <laughs> the Balanced Stone. There used to be another stone. The ghost stone is not there above the stone that is. The stone that is, is on the roof of the building where air passes through windows that are not there. Like the quartz gathered in the woods near the house a child used to live in, who used to be me. The ghost of the child is balanced on the roof of what I have forgotten. The year of bad decisions. My brother's trombone spit, welling up inside. Brass instruments smelled like dirty metal. Unlike my violin, the odor of hardwood, rosin, and horsehair, more tactile than gross. We'd practice in our rooms upstairs. His bleating drowned out my high notes. Mother begged us to take breaks tempted us with plates of Ritz and cheddar. A bribe to soothe her delicate ears, knowing full well we would start again next day. Perhaps we were the reason she spent so much time out of the house, finding excuses to leave us alone for hours on end. We didn't know her newly single life or what she did at night. Found out later she was dating the chorus teacher, whose classroom both my brother and I attended. Thank goodness she turned down his proposal, since my brother hated him with a passion. I don't remember why. He was a bit of an ass, thinking on it now. Senior year, I played second chair first violins, then made my way through college. The violin did not. My brother put aside the trombone, took up guitar. A fine choice. Less spit. We never looked back. So I've noticed, because I have a grandson and because I pay attention, that people don't um, let their kids just go out and play anymore. You have to be watching them every second. And I remember uh, 
for years when I was little, just being told to go out, go out and play, go. And even when we lived in New York City, which we did at one point, I was about nine. Um, they, I remember walking the dog <laughs> at eight years old by myself, wandering around Manhattan. Um, this is called Skate Pond, 1962, age seven. Skating alone, someone grabs my hand and pulls. I almost fall. It is the end of the terrible formation called a whip. Ten or twenty big kids holding hands, going much too fast for me. I tumble and am dragged along until they let me go. I limp across the ice, all skate strings and bloody knees. Nobody comes to check. Nobody cares. I don't think there was a parent at that lake. And I probably had my little brother in tow to boot. I was thinking about that. All right. Um, I guess I'll read the violin poem that's in this one. There's violin poems in both books, so if you like violins, there's places. It's full of violins. <laughs> my violin has been tucked in the closet for years. Black case, green plush interior, bridge broken. Strings gone, hairless bow on a hook. Long gone are days of before school orchestra, after school lessons, brown mark under my chin. Took up guitar, forgot the violin. You can't sing with a violin, and no talent, so I thought. Years later, a friend's violin sitting out, Scheherazade on the music stand. Asked if I could try, it was one we played. So shocked, I almost dropped the instrument. She explained it was the violin. If only I had known all those years in high school when I sounded worse than everyone else, no matter how hard I practiced. It was my student violin that lacked resonance, not I. Reveille. 7.15 at YMCA camp in New Hampshire. They sometimes played a jazzy. Dun, 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 dun. I heard a bugle in my head every morning all year. Didn't need an alarm for school. Always made it to orchestra by eight. All through high school, four years of camp stuck hard. At night, I heard taps. Guitars. I believe in strum and riff, in the medley of pluck and thrum, in strings pulled taut to tune, finessed with finger picks or tickled with steel for a slide, in the bring of a chord, the vibration of hammer-on. I believe in a good fake book. At the midnight jam, I'll bring my ex, you bring yours. We'll play St. James Infirmary, and Uncle John's band until the sun comes up over the Hudson or the Ohio. New season. I am alive, running over rocks, wet, still tipped with winter's frosting, almost slip, barely holding on. This is the key to spring's return, a long garden path already blooming with forsythia cherry. Soon, Marigolds will ring tomatoes, peppers, squash, leaving winter a bookmark only in memory. Stuck bee. My friend's bees stay mainly in her yard, but one of them landed on my car, snuck its small body between the wiper and the windshield, discovered on the highway, translucent wings a wild flutter, holding onto glass in the wind. Pulling off the first exit, the bee was gone, leaving a film of pollen, a bit of wing. Flutter. Gone are the days of bubble gum and bloody knees, the patter of feet on stairs, the spilling over of bath water, high squeals and fighting words, battles for who was first to the car, or the table, everything but to bed. The nighttime tears that ended with a book or a song, 
the long look after my children slept, a wish to stop time's flutter, to let them be small a while. So I wrote this listening to punk rock, just so you know. It's called Wave. This is a rogue wave, this is a violent song. Big fish eat little fish. You can drown here, and I could let you. So easy to lose you to the shark below, to the killer whale. You are my angel, and I am your damselfish. We churn with the foam, splash our fins, spit out surf and gray salt. Your waves meet mine, and tsunamis happen. This is not a shipwreck. This is a powerful slap. A riptide surge filled with bait and flotsam, a wall of water pounding sand. And I have one more poem for you. This is the title poem. It's called Sometimes I Hear the Clock Speak. A knock and sequence, hands unsuccessful, reach for numbers. Twelve hovers atop a round white mountain. Long sweeping curve of shrug, a gesture in one direction. The hiccup of a second, the thousand spins of a life. Thank you so much for having me today. I'll say it before and at the end if you'd like to purchase uh, my books, um, you can go to salmonpoetry.com. It's S-A-L-M-O-N, like the fish. Mm -hmm.